From the West Kimberleys, situated in northwest Australia, comes the legend of Clarabulla, the long necked turtle. The story tells of two Aboriginal children, Langu, a boy who was eight years old, and his sister Wayne, the girl, who was a year younger. They were talking to their mother on the camping ground and asking if they might just go down. And run and run and run. Mother? Yes, Wayne, my daughter? Would my brother Langu and I be permitted to swim and fish in Kalyida, the rock hole? My. I say yes, though I like it not, for our people well know the rock hole, Kalyida. We know that lurking in its depths is the fearsome long necked turtle, Clarabulla. He's as large as two horses. He who sleeps all day, but at night, swims on the surface looking for children who dare stay by the rock hole after dark. Go, children, but do not linger at the rock hole after the setting of the red sun. The children, Wayne and Nangu, hurried to the rock hole intent on a day of swimming and fishing and playing as young children will. Hey, Wayne! Catch this stone! Come now, I'll race you to the other side of the rock hole. Lungo, look! A barramundi fish! Quickly now, Diamond Spirit! Oh, good, good, you got him! Swim to the bank and let's see him. And so the two Aboriginal children played. Played throughout the day, laughing and swimming, and generally having fun. It is evening. The shadows have lengthened, and nightfall is near. The Aboriginal woman sits in the clearing. She is singing singing to calm the fear she feels for her children who are still at the rock hole. She is thinking of Clarabulla, the mighty long-necked turtle, the monster who will surely come to the surface as night falls. She turns to the man near her. He is sharpening a spear. She says, No, 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 Dindimara. Bojo mono, Clarabulla. Uda. Bolo the Aboriginal woman is telling the man of her fears, and as she talks, the dusk turns to darkness. They rise to their feet and make their way to Kalyida, the rock hole. Following behind them are the other members of the tribe. They reach the edge of the rock hole from where they can dimly see the children swimming out in the centre of the pool. The mother calls to them. Wayne! Long off! No, 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 She is entreating them to come out of the water. Even as she speaks, there is a disturbance at the other end of the pool. The surface breaks and the giant turtle rises before the horrified eyes of the aboriginals on the bank. The woman gives a single scream. <coughs> She watches horrified as Clarabulla swiftly swims across the rock pool and drags the children under the water. After a short silence, the mother starts to sing a plaintive lament. In the song, she is asking the good spirits to punish Clarabulla, the turtle, punish him for stealing her children. There is a sequel to this legend. It is said that the good spirits turn the monster turtle into a very small animal, one that the aboriginals now eat as a delicacy. And there are two small bones shaped 
one like a small boy, the other like a girl. A lasting reminder of Waini and Langu, two small bones that are found in the throat of every long-necked turtle, which they still call Clarabulla. Nangera, nangera, kalanganyawanga pare pare nangera, 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 kalanganyawanga pare pare nangera.